Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks and today I'm going to be talking about why, at least in my opinion, the Progetto 46 is probably the best tier 8 premium tank in the game. But before I dive into why I feel this way, I want to highlight a few things about this video. Number one, you might notice my Progetto looks a little bit different for some reason. Two, you might notice that my ping is a little high at 100 milliseconds, going up to 120 there. And three, you might notice that my account name is actually Quickie Baby instead of Quick Fingers, like it usually is. Now, I'm not going to go into that because that's going to take too long, but uh, as to why my account name is Quick Fingers and not Quickie Baby. But the point is, if you put one, two, and three together, you might actually figure out that I was playing on the NA server for this game. I was playing on my NA account for Thanksgiving because all of my American viewers, all of my, pl all of, and even my Canadian viewers and people who play on the NA server, you are my biggest fan base. There are more people who watch um, from the NA, from the US, I should say specifically alone, than any other nation. Which is bizarre because a lot of people think that, well, it's a small server, right? Well, not really. At least I pride myself in having such a passionate user base internationally. That's what I've always tried to gear myself towards. I don't feel like I'm an EU community contributor or an EU um, content creator. I'm, I definitely pose myself towards anyone who is willing to listen within the English language. So it's always a pleasure to be able to go get on the NA server. Now, I don't want to talk about... Oh, I'm sure a lot of people are going to be asking in the comments, oh, what was your opinion on the NA server? Do you think, how, how do you think that people play? I've got some rough ideas, and the 20 or 25 games that I played on the NA server kind of really uh, cemented those. I've had those opinions before. However, I'm not going to give a, an all-out opinion on that, because I, I need to play a lot more games on, and I don't want to jump to conclusions. And importantly, I realized afterwards that for the Thanksgiving day that I played, Everybody was given three days of premium. Lots of people would be coming back to the game and playing for maybe the first time in several months. How was I meant to get an idea of how the server play base would be playing outside of that? So unfortunately for me, there's an LTG on my team who's just being an absolute little sausage. Now I understand that he might want to be able to get some shots in there, but come on little tier 7 Soviet light tank. I was just sitting there still and you tried to muscle your way in front of me and push, push me out of the position. Is the NA server not friendly based on this one instance? Yeah, yeah, that's totally... No, 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 come on. It's like, there's just as many idiots playing on whatever server you play on, whatever kind of uh, language you might be speaking. So I say thanks to the player in the worst possible way. Thank God there's not any team damage anymore, otherwise he might have been able to give that to me a little bit. Okay, so now that I've set the scene, now that I've let you know where I'm playing, and we've we've highlighted all that, let me focus back on the matter at hand, and that is the Progetto. I've just casually done 2,000 damage in the first uh, three minutes of this game, and that should be no surprise because this vehicle is an absolute boss. The Progetto, when it first went into the game, was buffed at the very last minute before release. Um, we were actually able to, at least the, the community contributors who were able to test the Progetto, tested it in a, in a slightly different form to what it would have been when it came out as a mission marathon vehicle before the Italian auto-reloading medium tank tech tree came into play. And it was a very exciting tank because it brought in this new auto-reloading mechanic of which, stay tuned to the channel because on Tuesday I'm going to possibly be showing you something very exciting related to that, but I can't say any more. Maybe I've already spoiled it too much. Hmm. Maybe, possibly, who knows, possibly. I, I, look, I'm just gonna have to go with it anyway. Stay tuned because there's something very exciting coming to the channel. So the Italian auto-reloaders, when the Progetto first went into the game, it was just, it was just pretty good. It was very good, actually. And I think that the popularity, oh, come on, lover, stop dodging my shells here right now. Just, just come backwards a little bit and take them. So the Italian auto reloaders quickly started to become very popular. And in fact, do you know that this vehicle is the second most played premium medium tank of all time. That is how popular this vehicle is. Now, maybe it's because of some rental system, or maybe it's because it's just that's how good the vehicle is. It's an absolutely outrageous tank because it can just go everywhere, do everything, have good gun depression, have good view range, and if you can fire off your shells one by one by one, and then just wait for a shot to be able to go back into the, the breach of the, of, of what, to be loaded, to be ready to fire it. Then that means that you can just choose, that you've just got so much more flexibility for the situation. Let's say, for example, a tank is on, 
480 hit points. Well, do you low roll the first shot? If you low roll the first shot, well, maybe you don't want to fire the... If you've only got two rounds, maybe you don't want to fire the second one. And you want to wait for the an extra shell just in case you low roll again. However, you high roll, maybe now that you're going to be able to take the chance to be able to fire the remaining shell in your tank to be able to shut down the vehicle. Quite often, let's say you're fighting somebody who's on 800 hit points. You'll go in, fire one shot, wait for the shell to be fully reloaded, and then unload three shells in quick succession. And that is just what's so insanely powerful about this vehicle. It's the fact that unlike autoloaders, you can account for RNG. You can account for that low roll. You can account for that bounce. You can account for that miss. And you can adapt to the situation without, for example, having to run away and reload for 30 seconds like you would have to do on a Lorraine. Now, of course, it does come with its disadvantages, and that was meant to be very bad damage per minute on the Italian autoloaders, auto-reloaders. So the Tier 9 and the Tier 10 tank, the Standard B and the Progetto 65, were deemed to be too good, even though their win ratios weren't even that good. And then, a couple of months ago, Wargaming decided to nerf all of the Italian auto-reloading tanks. They removed the auto-reloader's ability to use a gun rammer, Okay, so you're just going to add on an additional 10% to the reload of the vehicle if vehicles are no longer able to use gun rammers. And they combined that with nerfs to the dispersion values and the gun handling and the aim time of the tier 9 and the tier 10 tanks. And since then, you haven't really seen too many autoloaders, at least inside the tech tree, playing the game. However, for some bizarre reason, instead of nerfing the Progetto 46 as well, Wargaming decided to actually buff the Progetto 46 because it's a premium tank and Wargaming have two balancing, um, have two balancing, shall we say, beliefs inside their game. One is what they'll do to a tech tree tank and two is what they'll do to a premium tank. Since the Type 59 was nerfed and a lot of players were very unhappy about it and the Super Pershing was also nerfed as well and a lot of players were very unhappy about it and Wargaming actually had to offer refunds to everybody who purchased the vehicle who were not happy with its nerfed state even though frankly it was for the good of the game. So the issue is is that because Wargaming can never nerf premium tanks when they wanted to remove the gun rammer from all of the Italian auto reloaders they actually decided to buff the rate of fire of the Progetto as if it was using a gun rammer even though now it doesn't even have to have it inside its slot. So what that effectively meant is that the Progetto went from being a tank which had three equipment slots of which it used to have a gun rammer to now having the gun rammer for free and being able to use the other three slots for other things. So of course, for me personally, I will use I will use ventilation on this tank, I will use coated optics, and I will use vertical stabilizers. And even on some on my main account where I have an incredibly skilled crew and I'm willing to use premium consumables and I even got bond vents on that vehicle, I drop the coated optics and I actually put a turbo on the tank. And that leads to some absolute outrageous performance for the Progetto. Okay, so I managed to penetrate one. I'm not going to fire the second, and I don't fire the third. You might be questioning, why don't you fire the third? It's because I've only got nine rounds left in the tank. I'm very worried about wasting these rounds and being no longer able to carry this game. As you can see, the CS-53 is healthy. The Yag Panther might be healthy over on the other flank. I'm thinking about blind firing, but no, if I had more ammunition, I would fire it. But it's not often that you've picked up six kills and done 5,200 damage in a tier 8 tank and still have four enemies left to deal with. So back to what I was saying, that Wargaming effectively nerfed every tech tree Italian tank significantly. They removed its ability to use a gun rammer. They also removed a lot of its gun handling, but for the Progetto they buffed him. They turned this tank from having 1,800 damage per minute when it's fully loaded, up to 2,000 damage per minute. Now their argument was that they they didn't want, the you could have used a Bond rammer in the Progetto, and so they wanted to give it slightly more than 10% increased or better rate of fire because of the new opportunity for equipment 2.0. But the fact that this nerf happened at the same time that equipment 2.0 went into the game and suddenly equipment became very, very powerful that it was just a huge buff to this tank. You see my Progetto here going along at 55. Well, on my main account, my Progetto is able to go at 60. That's incredibly outrageous. And that's one of the things that a pay-to-win player is able to really take advantage of in uh, on these Italian auto-reloading mediums. 
The fact that you can get your view range up with a premium consumable, with Brothers in Arms, with situation awareness, with recon, and you combine that with probably bond vents as well that I've put on this tank because I play it so much in frontline. Why wouldn't I to be able to gain every little bit of strength that I can from the vehicle? And so that allows you to drop the coated optics and now to have a choice of so many different pieces of equipment and you have the gun rammer on it for free anyway. So that effectively means that the Progetto 46 as somebody very wittingly, wittingly, wittling, very, he was very, he was witty, yes. He very wittily said on my last video that this premium tank actually has four equipment slots because it was balanced. I would say it was balanced slightly higher. And then Wargaming took away the gun rammer but then buffed its rate of fire. And so it has a buffed rate of fire as if it had the gun rammer. But it also now has three equipment slots to be able to choose. Now that equipment slots are more powerful than ever inside World of Tanks, that makes this thing an absolute monster. And so whenever things are going wrong on my main account and also hell on my on my american account now as well i'll always jump into battle in the progetto it's just such a flexible tank and if you can master the way that an auto reloader works your impact in the game is just absolutely tremendous okay so i took a bit of a risk there as i came around the corner that the udes would have high rolled luckily for me he didn't and now it's about trying to find the artillery to see if i can maybe pick up the radley walters medal but unfortunately for me my team manages to secure the kill bit of a, a a tricky situation here at the end to handle so many tanks with such limited ammunition on the progetto and that's probably one of the only things that truly holds this tank back if it could carry more ammunition and i'd just like to clarify it has a potential damage of over 10,000. that's usually more than enough for you to be able to get through your rounds of world of tanks and there's nothing unusual about the ammunition loadout of this vehicle but since they've buffed the rate of fire so much your ability to be able to just dump round after round after round has never been more wild. So you know you've had a good game when you've damaged 12 out of the 15 players on the enemy team. I've got a high caliber medal here for 5,600 damage of 1,709 base experience points with 7 kills, giving us a cool 136,000 credits profit even after we resupply our ammunition and our premium consumables. So there's a few conclusions that I want to draw here. Number one, while I perfectly well understand why Wargaming decided to buff an already incredibly powerful vehicle when they were nerfing every other tech tree version of it that comes down to money and not wanting to annoy i guess what they consider to be their most important customers it does come at the balance of the game how many of you out there have played frontline and just see constant lt432s constant progetto 46s constant lorraines or somewhat sms just grinding through this tier 8 game mode it almost feels as if it's kind of becoming not optional if you want to be competitive. And I also strongly disagree with the principle that they would treat their premium tank balance or their premium content balance inside the game differently as to how they would treat the tech tree tanks. I really don't feel that the standard B or the Progetto 65 were outrageously overpowered. But if they were, then surely this little monster that's staring you right in the face was too. And I truly hope that Wargaming realize that when they make a decision to buff a premium tank when they've nerfed every other vehicle inside the tech tree, I guess because they decide that the game mechanic is overpowered, that while I guess they make their premium customers happier, they're also just making the World of Tanks game itself and definitely the balance of it at each tier worse and worse and worse. And I've been reading so many comments recently from players who feel that the game has changed and that the, they just can't keep up with it and tiers that previously they enjoyed they can no longer enjoy. Well, I'm not going to try and pin that all down to the Progetto. This is just one of the many pieces of the puzzle as to why, for a lot of players, the game just doesn't quite feel the same now. And to finally conclude about the Progetto itself, I don't think this is going to be the best vehicle for everyone. There are some players who are going to do better sitting at the back of the map with a Scorpion G and just putting off a couple of 490 alpha damage bombs. And that will be a profound impact for them and their playstyle inside the battle. There are other players who are going to do very well in a vehicle like the LT-432 or even something like an ELC-90 and providing that active scouting role. There are other players out there who are going to do better if you put them in a defender and just get them to hold down their W key till they get into the most important position of the map and watch as their, their opponents are probably going to be unable to penetrate them reliably and they're still going to deliver those 440 alpha damage bombs. 
But for me personally, as somebody who wants to be able to have a vehicle that's flexible enough to be able to impact the battle and I have all of the tools at my disposal to be able to deal with all of the situations that arrive, combine that with the ability to deal 720 damage within four seconds yeah this one's a real winner anyway ladies and gents boys and girls that was it for today hopefully you enjoyed this one if you did give it a thumbs up if you hated it give it a thumbs down and let me know in the comments what you think the best premium tank is inside the game at tier 8 and if you have no idea well if you're watching this video on sunday I've got a treat for you. Seeing how there is a big sale right now on the European server and consumables and equipment are at a 50% discount, I need credits! I need all the credits! So what I'm going to do right now is play as many premium tanks as I possibly can until I drop on twitch.tv forward slash quickiebaby in a special premium showcase. And so if you're wondering which ones are the best to pick up possibly if they come out for sale during this holiday season, then this one is going to be the one for you. So really looking forward to seeing all of you right now. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been Epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.